Well, it's August, and we always love talking hockey in August, particularly with this guy, Connor Bedard, number 98 of the Regina Pats, joins us, I'm assuming, from the West Coast today. Hey, Connor, how you doing? I'm doing good. How are you? Good, good, good. Well, I know you've been on skates a lot this summer. We were following what was going on at the uh, development camp in Calgary. With that and everything else, how's your summer been? Uh, it's been pretty good. You know, just kind of normal, nor- normal training and stuff. How's, how's yours been? <laughs> well, busy. It's, I've been missing hockey, my friend. We're having a lot of chats about when the Regina Pats are going to be starting up here right away. Which, by the way, what is your schedule? Like, everything's <clears throat> still all out of order, Connor. We got the World Women's Hockey Championship about to start. It's in August. Um, normally, Hawk, Pats training camp would be starting up in about 10 days or so. Uh, what are your plans and prep for that? You know the dates already? Yeah, uh, I'm pretty sure I'm heading up on the 31st of august and then we start like the second or first or something right so, well yeah, that, i got a couple more weeks at home and then i'm headed out so has that included a lot of rollerblading like i've found out from my west coast people that that's something you guys do a ton out there is rollerblading it's a west coast thing how much have you been on rollerblades this summer yeah i uh, get them out my my league just finished like friday so it's it's definitely a lot of fun and it's yeah it's pretty popular out here Tell me, tell me about that league. Who plays in that league? Uh, well, <clears throat> my team had like Ken Johnson, um, Jake Christensen, Crookshank, and then like a lot of kind of, you know, the, all those guys are in the A. Ken's obviously in Michigan and, and just went like fifth overall. So uh, we had a good team. And then there's a lot of, just a lot of junior guys and, and you know, there's some dev guys. So it's, it actually gets pretty competitive. So it's a lot of fun. Do you find, Connor, that it gives you – an appropriate enough workout to get ready for the real season in terms of your legs and stuff? Because I know you can't stop. Believe me, I played a lot of roller hockey in my day. It's not the same. How does it do for your conditioning? Yeah, I mean, that's that's not all I'm doing. So I don't think it's going to make a huge difference. But I think it's good for, like, your hands and stuff, creativity. And, and you know, it is good for conditioning. It's pretty hot in there, and you got to – you know, obviously skate a lot. So there is definitely a lot of benefits towards playing, I think. It's funny. Uh, Brady Leovold's watching from Muskoka, Ontario. You <laughs> may know that name. Uh, former Tampa Bay Lightning prospect. Great WHLer. He said, this kid is lights out. Uh, Got Milt is watching in Winnipeg. He says, roller hockey is awesome. No, oh, it's absolutely awesome. And I know you've been doing it for a real long time. I got to ask you about that Hockey Canada camp because my brother, Connor, texted me he was losing it he's like how's connor not in the under 20 group why is he not there and then we found out afterwards that you were in the under 18 group uh, i personally think you should have been in the under 20 group but how did those workouts uh how did that camp go for you uh, i was good yeah you know it's it's definitely a lot of fun getting to play and against and with kind of the, the best players in the country so uh i think it was it was good you know get a get in uh in that Hockey Canada system even more is, is never a bad thing. So I uh, obviously got to play a few games, and it was definitely a lot of fun. Actually, Cole Sillinger was in here just last week sitting in that chair talking about what he did in his four-goal performance with Team Dick in the, uh, the under-20 group. Did you guys mix and mingle quite a bit, the under-20s and the under-18s, or were you kept totally separate because of COVID stuff? I'd I'd see see them a bit like uh, kind of lunch and stuff. I talked to Cole like once or twice. Kind of it was kind of our first time meeting, but uh, I'd see a lot of the guys that I played with at, at U18s and in the lunchroom and stuff, and, and kind of talk. So uh, that part was definitely good getting to talk to those guys. Well, it's good for you to see those guys and be around those guys as much <clears throat> as possible. Connor, I got to ask you. Let's just go back a year. When we were doing these interviews last summer, it's been one heck of a year for you, right? (laughs) You've been to Sweden, you played in the bubble, you led the dub in scoring before you left, then you went to the World Under-18s, and you're the player of the tournament there. Um, When you look back, have you stopped and thought about what the last year has been like for you? Uh, I don't know, like, I guess a little, but, you know, it was definitely, you know, a crazy year for everyone. Uh, You know, like you said, going to Sweden coming back and playing kind of in a, in a different different season for the dub and, and then obviously in, in another bubble in Texas. But, uh, you know, I was just so grateful to get to play, obviously. Going over to Sweden was probably the biggest biggest difference. And then, you know, coming in, we didn't know about the dub really. And, 
you know, being able to get those games in was, was awesome. And then, uh, you know, I kind of wasn't expecting the chance to go over to Texas, but uh, that was definitely, you know, really special and being able to win. When obviously a gold medal was was definitely surreal. So it's it was definitely a really cool year. You know, and the thing is, thank <coughs> Kevin thank Kevin Gallant for alerting me that you were coming on to the hockey world's radar, specifically my favorite team, the Regina Pats. But for you, you were just Connor being Connor, right? I mean, <clears throat> those when when the world under eighteen opened, people were writing me going. He's, he, he's not Connor McDavid. I said, he, nobody said he was. He's Connor Bedard. You actually said that from the start. You said, you're my own, I'm my own player. Would you suggest that in all these showcases that you've been in, that that's kind of played out that way? You've just been you, and you've got a penchant for scoring big goals, and uh, you're very hard to hit. You're slippery, that kind of thing. But it just kind of went the way you would have wanted it to go, I would think. Yeah, uh, yeah. When I kind of started in that in Texas in that tournament for the round robin, I had you know I think one one goal and, and like a couple assists or something. And you know I didn't <clears throat> really think I was playing well at all. And uh, so you know, like I said, I kind of just had to play my game. And you know, things ended up going going my way, obviously in, in the playoffs. But yeah, I just kind of try to play my game and <clears throat> not really listen to anything outside. But uh, I mean, if people are comparing comparing me to McDavid, that's that's pretty special. So, uh, yeah, I mean, I try to just be myself on on and off the ice. Well, you know, I had the great pleasure of calling your games, the Pats games, on television around here, and uh, a viewer said, "It's Marcel Dion," and I'm like, "My goodness, it is." Had you that way, way, way before your time? Your dad might have a tough time remembering Connor or uh, Marcel Dion. Have you ever heard that uh, comparison before? Because that's that's you in a lot of ways. I haven't found anybody better. Is, have you heard that before? Uh no, I haven't. <laughs> I haven't actually watched him play, so I just heard his name. But no, it's pretty cool. Obviously, it. I'll have to uh, name. I'll have to talk to Thomas about that and see if he's I, your dad's not uh, that young. He would <clears> remember <throat> Marcel Dion for sure. But hey, playing in Texas because I got so many buddies that are scouts that were there. The, the barns were full, hey? What was it like playing in front of huge crowds again in Texas? It, it looked like you were pretty fired up on that tourney. Yeah, uh, our round robin was was in a different rank than the playoff one, so it was like there was only so many seats and it was all scouts, so you kind of get in there, and it looks like a full building because it's it's so small and it's just scouts, so that you're kind of looking up and you see all these NHL logos and, and all that stuff, but and then obviously when we get to playoffs, it was <clears throat> the more more of the full crowd, and, and every game it got more and more. So it was definitely great to have that. I mean, I haven't really had that that much, obviously not being a junior, but uh, it was definitely pretty cool seeing, especially after we won, everyone stay and with Canada flags and everything. So it was definitely pretty awesome. It was totally awesome. Um, the Hockey Club podcast is watching from Tallahassee, Florida. He says, I can't wait to watch Connor play. He says, backhand snipe over the goalie's shoulder from 20 feet out. How? One of the best goals I've ever seen. And I remember that game. Was that not the semifinal? <laughs> you're laughing. You're smiling. Right, me, right over the goalie's shoulder. My thing that I love watching you is there's a different tool coming out of your toolbox every shift, let alone every game. But how does a guy, how much have you worked on your backhand in your lifetime? Yeah, uh, I've worked on my backhand a lot. Honestly, I don't think I could do that shot again if I tried. But, <laughs> but that was, I think that was, might have been a one-time thing. But, yeah, I've definitely worked with my backhand a lot. You know, a lot of the adrenaline goes into it and, and, you know, all that stuff, being able to get it as hard as I did, which, you know, obviously I didn't know I could. But, uh, yeah, you know, just practice and, and kind of repetitive. So I think, uh, I think that was kind of just a shot that happened. And I don't know if it'll happen again, but I hope so. Was that the game, Connor, <clears throat> where you had a breakaway and got stuffed, and like the next shift, you had a penalty shot, and and I I, th I think that was the game because I remember to talking with Craig Button afterwards about it, and just when you came down on that penalty shot, you were from here to here to here, and Craig's like, that is not easy to do. You make it look very natural, but how much have you worked on that lateral side to side stuff? Yeah, uh, I did the same move as you know, like the two or three breakaway goals I got with the low glove thing. 
And the goalie, I didn't expect the goalie to save it because I had <clears throat> had my way with it in the dub. And but he, you know, he made a good save. Uh, but yeah, you know, I was I was pretty upset coming back. Um, obviously, he missed a penalty shot in, in a gold medal game. Down one nothing. You know, you, you think about oh, if we don't score again, then you know we lose, and and it could be put on me. But <clears throat> uh, yeah, you know, I kind of just try to wash it off and, and kind of go play play the rest of the game. Actually, <laughs> okay. A lot of things been going on in my cranium, so that's why I forgot. So, yeah, you got stuffed on the penalty shot. And I remember when you did, I remember thinking, ah, he's human. And then you came out and scored, <laughs> scored the big-time goal. I'm like, oh, maybe not. Um, so just before you said you're coming to town on the 31st, how excited are you for this upcoming season? How much have you been keeping in touch with your teammates and looking forward to, to getting to town and getting camp rolling? Yeah, I'm uh, super excited. Uh, obviously, you know, a regular year and, and you know, I think <clears throat> I think we got a pretty good team going into the year, so I think we can kinda give a lot of teams a tough game and obviously being able to get the fans back is gonna be gonna be so so cool and obviously, you know, watching watching old games and seeing how into it they get and even uh, just the Rough Rider games. <laughs> I watched one on T V the other day and it's it's crazy how, you know, intense they are and kinda how much I just love love the city and, and love watching. So that's definitely going to be really cool. And then just kind of the, the regular year, all those fun long bus trips. So, uh, yeah, I'm definitely really, really looking forward to a more, more normal season. No doubt. Well, you could tell the love for the team from the fan base, but they weren't in the building, obviously, because of the bubble. I felt real fortunate because we had a captive audience, everybody tuning in to watch you play. And it was fantastic. And uh, the Pats finished <coughs> middle of the pack in the standings there. I think that it'll be a really good season for the Regina Pats Hockey Club. Well, <clears throat> my last question for you is this. All the viewers are writing in going, please don't get drafted by Arizona or something. Some are saying, I hope you go to Calgary. And... Have you heard that from people the talking about how much they'd love to have you on their team? Because you have no clue. There's a lottery. It's two years away. You have no idea. But how much are people saying that to you? And how do you answer it? Uh, I don't know. I mean, not really directly to me, but kind of like in comments and stuff, I'll see that. But, I mean, it is two years away. You know, it's it's definitely not a sure thing that I'm even getting drafted. So kind of can't really look at that. But... You know, it's it's kind of cool just seeing seeing people you know want me already, but uh, yeah, it's definitely a while away. So try not to focus on that too oh, much. Absolutely. And now I've gotten to know you enough to know that you just concentrate on what's right in front of you, and uh, it seems to be working really well. So, uh, Connor, I appreciate the time this morning. Enjoy what's left of summer. Stay safe, of course. Can't wait to see you when you get here. And uh, all the best. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks for having me. All right, Connor Bedard, number ninety-eight. Joining us from Vancouver. You're watching Rod Peterson On Demand. For more of the Rod Peterson Show, visit rodpeterson.com or follow Rod Peterson on social media.